Hello, we're here to talk about investment. This is a key issue facing the UK economy after many years of underinvestment across both the public and private sectors. My name is Anna Valero. I'm the Director of the Growth Programme at the Centre for Economic Performance at the LSE. I'm James Smith. I'm Research Director at the Resolution Foundation. So James, tell us why investment is so important for the growth prospects and living standards of the UK economy. I think the thing people really have to keep in mind is investment is all about spending money on goods that help produce uh, more goods and services in the future. And most investment spending is done by businesses. So two pounds in every three that's spent on investment in the UK is spent by businesses. And you can think of this as things like the machines that are used in manufacturing or the computers that are used in uh, service industry. So they're a really key part of how we actually produce goods and services in the, in the UK. But um, public investment and spending by the government is also really important as well. So that's about one pound in every five that's spent on, on investment. And uh, it's really important because it, um, it enables growth. So things like roads help uh, businesses produce their output, but it also helps with our social infrastructure, uh, things like hospitals, and also meeting really big challenges like levelling up um, across regions and hitting the net, net zero targets that we've set out in terms of the transition path for, for decarbonisation. And by spending money by, by the private sector and by the government, that coming together to help us produce more, that's really key to how living standards increase over time. And that's what allows wages to go up, living standards and prosperity to improve. So Anna, tell me uh, about what our record's like on investment. Well, our record on investment is pretty weak when we compare ourselves to other advanced economies. If you look at our total gross fixed capital formation, which covers all those things you've talked about, plant and machinery, business structures, also things like research and development expenditures, so innovation, expenditure and investment, and what we see is that that has lagged other economies for some time. But this underinvestment has been both in the public sector and in the private sector. So as you pointed out, both of them matter, as do their interaction. So take the public sector first. Um, if you look at OECD countries since the turn of the century, the average investment rate on a comparable basis was about 3.7% of GDP, whereas the UK was around 2.5% of GDP. So over 1% underinvestment compared to some of our main peers. This is low, but another issue with our public sector investment is that it's been volatile. So its volatility is particularly high versus that same group of countries over an extended period, say looking back over 60 years, particularly volatile. Um, and what this means is the stop-start nature of projects, of programs, means a lot of money is wasted and there's significant underspend. And as you say, this matters not only because those projects are needed in the economy because they shape the investment environment for firms too. So when we look at business investment, that also has lagged our comparators for some time. Our business investment rate started falling actually in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, it was, there was a hit in the financial crisis. Um, while we were recovering for a while, we then kind of saw another hit at the time of the Brexit referendum. And still today, despite some recovery since COVID, we've seen that our investment rate lags, say France, Germany, and the US, core comparator countries of the order of around two percentage points of GDP. This really matters because when we've looked at our gap in productivity with those countries, both in levels and in terms of growth over time, this investment seems to be quite a, a contributing factor. So how much difference could higher business investment actually make? Would it materially affect living standards? Well, the simple calculation implies that if UK business investment had matched the average of US, France and Germany, so around two percentage points of GDP higher over time, we would have actually expected to see GDP now being around 4% higher and wages per annum being around £1,250 higher. So a material difference to living standards. So what can we do, James, to improve our performance on public sector investment? So as you were saying, public investment is not just too low, it's also too volatile. So the key thing here is this is about the politics and it's about the process of public investment. So it's very easy for politicians to, to cut an investment project that people haven't ever heard of rather than cut funding to the NHS, for example. 
So there's a, a really sharp political incentive to cut investment. We're not going to change that. But it's also about the process of how uh, public investment is decided on. In the UK, uh, public investment decisions are very, very centralised. So they're in the hands of uh, largely the chancellor, uh, central government. And um, uh, the fiscal rules that we have really incentivize cutting public investment when we need to retrench on the on the public finances. So what we need to do is reduce those incentives. So uh, ideally change the fiscal rules so that they don't incentivize cutting public investment when we need to improve the public finance outlook. But also to uh, to uh, if we can't do that to really strengthen the consensus to have a sustained increase in in public investment and that's really important because um, in recent years we saw a, a, a rise in public investment following the 2019 election to the government's credit they uh, had plans to push public investment up to around three percent of GDP but in in uh, uh, recent fiscal events they've actually cut public investment once again and the reason it's the same the public finances needed to improve and that was the first thing that we reached for. So here the, the, the thing we can do is to improve the process of public investment planning. So get a strong cross-party consensus and to really make it harder for governments to, um, to uh, cut back on public investment. So put more public investment plans in the hands of local government and longer planning horizons and strengthen legislation to stop governments cutting back public investment. So what about business investment? What can we do there? Well, when it comes to business investment, it's not that there aren't opportunities for, for growth and investment here in the UK. When you look at returns on aggregate, returns on investment, they're not bad in the UK versus other countries. We know that there are lots of underlying strengths in the UK economy in growing areas when we look at comparative advantage in trade, in patenting, which gives us an indication on innovation. You can see that we have comparative advantage in high growth areas such as finance, professional services, the creative sectors, areas of advanced manufacturing, and also clean technologies. But there are a number of barriers that hold back investment in the UK. Um, a key one that is often discussed um, is policy uncertainty or instability. We've had a pretty unstable macroeconomic environment, but also within that, quite a lot of instability when it comes to business policies and growth strategies, with many different strategies, each of which was meant to be for the long term in recent years. And if you remember, that business investment rate actually started falling in a more stable time in the late 90s, early 2000s. So one part of it is improving stability, that includes in corporate tax, so keeping incentives for investment stable over time. And one proposal would be to have an independent institution that advises government on growth policies for the long term and monitors um, government progress. But there are a number of other long-standing barriers to investment in the UK. One of them is to do with some of the incentives on management to think about long-term value creation. And within large companies, this relates to the ownership of firms. So if you look at our listed companies, a really, really small share of those companies are owned by blockholder engaged shareholders who focus on that long term value of a company compared to other advanced economies. And one plausible route towards improving that engaged ownership, as well as increasing flows of finance into high growth potential projects in the UK, is thinking about pension reform. And of course, there is quite a lot of policy momentum on this area, thinking about consolidating fragmented parts of the pensions landscape to allow that scale to then crowd investment into equities and unlisted assets too. Another key barrier is, you know, even if firms want to make investments, they can't always make those investments due to our very restrictive planning system. Um, and that prevents housing being built, which prevents productive places growing. It prevents infrastructure being built so people can move around and crucial net zero infrastructure too. So a number of ways we could improve that at the local level. We need local areas to have plans. Those plans kind of need to be enforceable. We need plans for economic infrastructure to be done at the right level of aggregation, reflecting a functional economic area. And ideally, local areas would see some of the financial benefits of that development, not simply bearing some of the political costs. So in summary, it's a, it's a combination of improved stability, sense of direction, clarity on growth policies and business policies. 
It's enabling management to have the incentive for long-term investment through things like pension reform. Um, and it's also enabling management to actually undertake the investments that they want to make through things like planning reform. So there's no route back to higher growth that doesn't go through higher investment. So ending stagnation really involves boosting our investment prospects. But there's more to boosting growth than just uh, boosting investment. So for a full list of policy recommendations and all the things that will help us boost growth and bring down inequality, see ending stagnation, the final report of the Economy 2030 inquiry.